Well, good morning and welcome to A Moment in the Word with Pastor Philbert Candelaria. What a beautiful morning it is. What a beautiful morning it is to open up our eyes and just to be still and know that He is God and just enjoy the splendor of His creation. That's the most favorite part of my morning is that and having a cup of joe, getting my day started, but making sure that God is the foundation of my footsteps. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about a question that has been asked on several times, you know, many years back and just recently. Um, the question was, what is Christian hope? And that's a really good question because we have to try to understand what is Christian hope? You know, most people understand hope as wishful thinking. You know, that's what the world has defined hope as, um, hope that something will happen. This is not what the Bible means by hope. And that's why we are different to the ways of this world. You know, we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. So that's the worldly definition is wishful thinking, hoping that something will happen. But the biblical definition of hope is a confidence, confident expectation. Listen to that word. It's a confident expectation, knowing that you'll get it. You're confident. There's no doubt that you're going to get what you're asking for. Hope is a firm assurance regarding things that are unclear and unknown. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 24 through 25. For this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And then in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 Um, It says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the convictions of things not seen. So that's where it's talking about the difference is hope in the world is things that we can see, things that we hope for, things that we expect. But hope in the biblical terminology is um, things that we cannot see. Why? Because hope is a fundamental component of the life of the righteous and I love what Proverbs twenty three eighteen says, surely there is a future. Listen to those words. Surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. See, without hope, we as Christians, we our life loses its meaning completely. You know, there is no meaning without hope. There's no way to, you know, there's no reason why we should be living. Because Lamentations three eighteen says, so I say, my endurance has perished. So has my hope from the Lord. See, that's what he's talking about. Hope, you know, without life means nothing. So, and in death, there is no hope. So once we die, there's nothing. There's no coming back. There's no hope. You know, there's nothing for us. So now in the present time that we live in, I like what Isaiah 38, 18 says, for soul does not thank you. Death does not praise you. Those who go down to the pit do not hope for your faithfulness. He's talking about God. So now that we're living, what are we to hope for? We're to hope for a better future. We're to hope for the health of our family, our finances, the growth of the church. People that right now, as I'm speaking, are on the streets, young women, young men, children that are being abducted. We need to come in agreement that God, you know what? You say, if we ask it, we shall receive it. And we need to have hope confidence, right? A firm assurance, like I explained to you, that God is going to answer those prayers. See, the righteous this morning who trust or put their hope in God will be helped. Listen to this psalm, Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, my heart. In him, my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song, I give thanks to him. See, that is hope. That is hope in a nutshell. You know, we're not to be put to shame. We're not to be disappointed because when we have hope in God's scripture and his word, we know that it's a firm assurance. The righteous who have this trustful hope, hope in God and their confidence is built. Their confidence is protected and God will help them because Jeremiah 29, 11 is another scripture of hope. You all know that. I'm just going to read a little bit. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and hope. What does that mean? 
to give you a future and hope. It means that we're to be free from anxiety, free from fear, free of death, because we can't control that. But what we can control is who we are right now. What I am doing right now, I'm in control of. Listen, don't have fear and anxiety because in the psalmist spoke about it in Psalms 46, verse 2 and 3 says, Therefore you will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble, its swelling, Selah. That means that we are not to fear. See, the New Testament idea of hope, and I want you to get a hold of this, is, a, is um, recognition that is in Christ is only found in the fulfillment of who Christ is. The fulfillment of the Old Testament promises to the New Testament that you know what, we have hope that is rooted in faith by the divine salvation in Christ. Galatians 5.5 5 says, for though the spirit by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. What are you waiting on this morning? Is your hope in the world and the things that you can see? Or does your hope come from who God is, that you cannot see him nor that you can touch him, but you know he's there? Why? Because he has made himself known to you. Hope, people, is a promise from the Holy Spirit. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. In Romans 8, 24 through 25, for in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For he who hopes for what he sees, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it patiently. Listen, we have a battle that we're battling for right now, but we're not battling it. We're just to be faithful in it. We're to have faith that God has already promised us the whole war. The war has been won. We just have to continue to fight the little battles in our life. See, the redemption of the body is the whole creation. You know, we have eternal glory in Christ Jesus. And how do I know that? Listen to the scripture, Colossians 1, chapter 1, verse 27. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is in Christ, Christ in you, the hope of your glory. See, we have an eternal life promise for us this morning, and we have to grab a hold of it because God has a blessed future in store for us. It's guaranteed that the Holy Spirit will indwell us, you know, Christ in us, the resurrection of Christ. And it goes on, hope is produced by endurance through suffering, you know, Romans 5, uh, verse 2 and 5 says, Through him we have also obtained access by faith into the grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. See, we rejoice in our sufferings. It should be an inspiration behind who we are, because not only do we go through these things, we have the Spirit who indwells us. God never left us alone. You know, we tend to leave God alone and God doesn't want that. We have a spirit that lives inside of us. We can either quench him or we can allow him to build us up. Listen, we have to trust in God's word. We have to trust in what we cannot see. And most of all, in order to know who God is, to trust in something you cannot see or touch, we have to have faith. And where does faith come from? It doesn't come from Amazon you can't order a book on it. You can't read all about faith. You have to tap into the source. And that source is getting intimate with God. Asking God to show you. This is the first thing I do. I don't ask God, show me their faults. Show me who's coming against me. Show me what's happening around me. No, God, show me, me. Open me up. Let me be transparent, God. If there's anything inside of me, please, Lord, if it's not to build me up, please remove it, God. And you know what? When we see and we begin to speak that way, we examine, we do a self-examination of ourselves, And then and only then can we see the world for what it really is. Listen, Christians, as I close, this world, that this battle that we are in with one another, with family, with friends, with acquaintances, it's not a battle against flesh and blood. It's a battle against principalities, but you choose to battle that. You know what I choose to do is to remain in my lane, 
to pray, 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 and pray some more. Because I'm at a point in my life where there's too much to do for the kingdom. I can't worry about who loves me, who doesn't, who's mad at me. All I can worry about is what am I doing? Filbert Candelaria, what is he doing to please you, God? And when we get into that mindset, we begin to understand what eternal glory is. I have a few more minutes and I want to read this last thing for you. Along with faith and love, hope is an enduring virtue of the Christian life. Really, Pastor? Well, where is that in scripture? I love when you ask me that because I'm going to give it to you. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. So now faith, hope, and love, all three of them, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now faith, hope, and love abide these three, but the greatest of all three of those is love, and love springs forth hope. Because Colossians 14, 5 says, since we have heard of your faith in Christ, Jesus, and the love that you have for all the saints, because of this hope laid up for us in heaven, that we have heard before the word of truth, the gospel. Listen, this morning, your hope can produce joy, it can produce peace, and it can also let other people know what God lives in you. The God of all the universe or the God of this world? Because there's only two. There's not in between. There is either God of the heavens or God of this world. Because when you start to love and love and love and love, even those who you know don't love you, what do you do? You set yourself aside. You remember and you remind yourself that you are an ambassador. Everywhere you go and every word that you say and everything that you think, you represent the king of all kings. So even though we think it and we don't say it and we think, you know, we're okay, God already knows. He knows what we think. He knows what's in our heart. So I pray that you are intentional this morning. I pray that um, you continue to, to seek and dig deep in the word, rightly dividing the word of truth, you know, not taking it out of context, but studying it, allowing the Holy Spirit to manifest itself to you. Because here, we're praying for you, the members, the leaders, all parts of Lighthouse Galveston here in Texas, we are praying for you. Because we want to be a church on an island, but not an island on itself. We want to be a church on an island that is filled with love. God bless you all. Be intentional and know that God loves you.